Hello fellow scholars. Today I'll be presenting our paper, Exact Ellipsoid Volume Rendering for View Synthesis. Recently, neural radiance fields have become a popular way to perform view synthesis. Our work follows in this lineage of representing the scene as a glowing field of gas. However, we also draw inspiration from 3D Gaussian spotting, which models the scene using Gaussian billboards and alpha compositing. We've switched from Gaussians to ellipsoids, which allows us to perform volume rendering instead of alpha compositing. Not only does this remove popping artifacts, it results in better color blending between primitives, leading to better performance, especially on larger scenes. But first, what is popping, and why does 3D Gaussian spotting suffer from it? Here, we have a simple example of a camera rotating around two primitives, which are ellipsoids for the sake of illustration. On the left, the primitives are sorted once per camera. On the right, the primitives are rendered using numerical quadrature. Pay attention to the color between the red and blue primitives. It should be purple, like in the ground truth. However, since it must be either red or blue, the color flickers between the two. The authors of Stop the Pop suggest that the popping can be removed by sorting the primitives per pixel, and using a more clever depth for the primitives that is rotationally invariant. However, this depth is still translationally invariant, and these two primitives are offset from the rotation center. As a result, a moving line flicks across the screen. Our approach does not make any assumptions about how primitives overlap and is able to exactly integrate the volume rendering equation across our field of primitives. This is possible because our field is composed of constant density and color ellipsoids. Imagine casting a ray through this field and evaluating the color and density along the ray. These color and density values would follow a step function, with the discontinuities located at the surfaces of the ellipsoids. We can trace the steps of the function by repeatedly calling the closest hit function in a ray tracing API and integrating the color and density along the way. The result is that, instead of producing an approximation of the appearance of the field like 3DGS and Stop the Pop, our method matches the ground truth appearance of the field as computed via quadrature. The improved blending of our method is most visible here, on a simple wall colored by light and shadow. The other splatting based methods struggle to reproduce the color of this wall because the gradient does not match a Gaussian falloff. Here, we shrink and expand the primitives in a scene to show that our method is able to reproduce the appearance by bl blending a few primitives. We first compare our method to stop the pop. We now call your attention to the rug, which we reconstruct with more detail. We use the same densification heuristic as 3DGS and stop the pop, but achieve sharper results. Here, we have another example of what blender order artifacts look like in Stop the Pop, visible at the top of the door frame, as well as on the whiteboard. Here, we can see increased detail yet again on the ladder and on the radio, where text is legible in our method, but not in Stop the Pop. We wrap up with yet more examples of popping, this time from entering primitives. On some scenes, such as the London and NYC datasets from ZipNerf, the increase in detail from our method is even more obvious. Now watch the wall carefully in the upcoming clip. The shift in color is what popping looks like in 3DGS. Here's the NYC scene. Our method handles the shadows on the wall and the balls on the bookshelf particularly well. Finally, our method uses ray tracing and is capable of easily replicating fisheye lenses or depth of field. Thanks for watching. Here are the supplementary videos that go along with our epipolar diagrams.